Not bad. And uh, the cards have actually got um, ice on them. Making some toast. Lawrence uh, found some like ancient computers in one of the spare rooms the other day. Actually yesterday. And then uh, we've been messing around trying to get them working again. But one of them, you can hear it, he's left it on all night. What he's doing with it. I don't know if he's intentionally left it on or he's uh, forgotten about it. My gosh, it's noisy. I don't know if it's noisy because it's old or noisy because it was always noisy. We just didn't notice in them days. <laughs> I'm thinking they've got to be at least 15 years old, these computers. One of them's an old Mac. I think he's going to give it to somebody. I don't know. I don't know why. He said it buy one part and then it'd be okay. I said, surely it'd be like wading through treacle trying to use it, but apparently not. I don't know. As long as they've gone out of my kitchen today, there's no issue, is there? <laughs> Men. I remember my uncle Eric used to keep his motorbike in the kitchen. What is it with men? And stuff. Although I can't talk really, can I, with all my craft things? Have your regular spot on the sofa or a particular chair that you sit in all the time so then it's like your spot this is my spot the end of the sofa I've got a little table next to me full of crochet and knitting <laughs> i'm not showing you some mess but jack's been sitting here so it's nice and warm oh gosh it's really cold out there i forgot to check the temperature Looks like it's going to be nice then. Anyway, I'm up quite early. I couldn't sleep. I think um, I slept funny. My arms really like... You know, if I hold it up at a certain angle, it's like, ooh. I think I slept like dead, like comatose last night. Anyway, I'm going to finish my toast, drink my coffee. I'm up quite early, so I think I'm just going to... I might tempt to read the Daily Mail, or should I? I don't know. It just depresses me at the moment when I open up the news page. It's like, oh God. Ugh. Even the celebrity pages are full of doom and gloom at the moment. <laughs> just setting up for the day. It's like Groundhog Day. And uh, I haven't got a television in the bathroom. Don't need one really. But uh, in my bedroom, just had Good Morning Britain on in the background while I was putting some base cream on. Not really a fan of him, but here's Morgan who was just giving this um, government official, I don't know what he was, I missed, I missed the beginning of the interview uh, to say exactly what he does in the government. But... Uh, he was showing footage of train station um, platforms, like tube platforms, uh, around the um, London outer edge of people, like swarms of people getting off the train. So clearly they've all been jam packed in the train together. And then they're just getting off shoulder to shoulder, like nothing's going on. So. Here's Morgan actually asked this government official, like, how is it that you've got police jumping all over joggers in an empty park alone, doing their allotted exercising, and then you've got people packed like sardines in trains and swarming a platform. And you know, 
he asked him directly, from what I saw, he asked him at least four times directly to answer the question. And each time he parroted some, excuse my language, bullshit response. I'm thinking, why did I switch the bloody, sorry, why did I switch the bloody television on now? Because I've got all worked up about these stupid people. I hasten to add not Piers Morgan in this case. He did a very good job. <laughs> you could see he was clearly getting. I was I was thinking inside, I was going, just answer the question. And you could see the way he was asking the questions. He was also thinking, just answer the question. And even Susanna Reid, who normally disagrees with everything Piers Morgan says, just for the sake of it. Uh, you could see she was also like, just answer the question. What's wrong with these people? I mean, if you can't, if you don't know, you just say we're working on it. You don't give like ridiculous responses like that. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I need to just zen myself now. Because that's just really irritated me. <laughs> Been sat on this poor squash skirt for ages. Actually actually made it's like this um stretch faux leather i was gonna make a nice sorry so crumpled i've been sitting on it i was gonna make a nice pencil skirt for myself and then uh the zip is just a complete mess i sort of i, I stitched it down on the seam and then i thought you know what oh, just give it up so rather than unpick it because i can use them the scraps for something it's just been sat on the back of my chair for months now. And uh, oh, I've got hair on my face. So I'm just switching on. And uh, desperately need hand cream. I'm so happy I have this. Because um, actually my hand cream has run out and then I normally have um a tube of oh what is it I use I've used it for years it's really nice it's like cherry blossom what's the brand Lock Titan Lock Titan I can never pronounce it anyway because um because it went on lockdown um after I'd left the office I haven't got any of my uh my personal stuff I just you know it's all there so and anyway not Christmas gone, the Christmas before, <laughs> Lawrence bought me this, uh, we actually had Christmas in the UK for the first time in I don't know how many years, and Lawrence bought me this uh, Bayliss and Harding set, I mean it's got bath soap crystals, I don't even remember, we have got a very small corner bath that we installed for the children when they were babies, I don't even know the last time somebody actually went in that bath. I mean, we're talking like years. I, I, when we've got money, I would like to just rip that whole bathroom out. Um, I don't know. I think he panicked. He was panicked by, you know, like last minute gifts. Actually, so the story is we drove to the UK that year um, because we had all the gifts for everybody and we knew we'd bring a lot of gifts, you know, for the kids back with us because normally the family sends stuff but because they all knew we were coming they were actually sort of buying like like gifts gifts you know not just sort of like thin lightweight postage gifts or money and um what's going on with this and uh in the rush of everything um okay so we were getting the train we were driving so we were driving from holland to um Calais to get the you can go on the train with the car you drive the car onto the train and you go through the channel tunnel it's like a half hour train journey and you actually if you've never been on it it's amazing it's great it's not the cleanest of places I must admit it's always a bit grotty and in need of maintenance but for convenience and price point as well it's very reasonable um so you just literally you drive on the train with your car and you just sit in the you sit in your car for the whole journey it's like half an hour and then you arrive in Folkestone I think and then my family's um mainly in Manchester so then we have to drive up so 
it's Lawrence gets really bad seasick. So it's always a trade off. Do we do we drive to Rotterdam, which is like, I don't know, an hour and a half from here and get the overnight ferry? But then he's going to get sick. So it, that's like less driving time, but longer sailing time. And then in effect, it sort of knocks two days off your um, two nights off your trip, basically. Um, but then you sail into Hull there and then Hull to Manchester. I don't know, it's a couple of hours, if that. Um, or we do the longer driving time with the shorter um, sea travel. If that makes sense. So then we we'll drive from uh, Holland to um, Dunkirk or Calais. They're very they're spitting distance of each other. And then we can either get the ferry, which I think is like a two hour two hour sail over the channel, or we can get the train, which goes under the channel. But then when we get to the other side, it can be anything between a six and eight hour drive up to Manchester depending on the traffic sorry I've got hair I brushed my hair this morning and these one of them's just dangling I gave my fringe a little trim the other day but clearly I need to do a little bit more on it anyway so back to the story so we um this particular year uh we had um Lawrence uh Lawrence's cousin uh and her husband live in Antwerp. Uh, they're from South Africa. And they'd come to um, have Christmas with us. And then my friend Natalie and her husband and kids came on Christmas Day. So we had like a nice sort of family gathering at our house. It wasn't a particularly late night. But um, we were literally leaving. We were driving to the UK on Boxing Day. The second Christmas Day. What they call it in Holland. So... Um, I didn't set the alarm so we woke up and all hell broke loose so we literally just flew out of the house I'd packed everything anyway we almost had a head-on collision it was awful and um with the train I think so you book your time slot but you can free of charge you can get the one either side of it and then after that it starts sort of going up and up in price and um so we were like, stuff it, it's going to cost us. There's no way we're going to get to ease into the, one of the free slots, either side of the one we paid for. So, um, oh, it was terrible. And anyway, we're halfway to France. Lawrence realised he'd forgot my Christmas present. So I am getting to the story of the hand cream. So um, when we got to the UK, you can imagine, I was like a little bit pissed off because I'd really gone you know out of my way to make Christmas special for us all as I tried to do every year and then I was like I didn't even have one gift off like the kids to open so hence the story I think so he went panic buying and he did he got me some lovely things and you know he'd ordered me um some um knitting needles that I'd wanted for ages so it, I had lovely gifts waiting for me when we eventually got back home. But anyway, hence the story of this Bayliss and Harding gift set. So um, there was a shower gel in it, which I, I emergency used because we ran out of the family shower gel. Uh, wasn't that impressed with it, if I'm honest with you. Um, and then these two have been sat on the side for ages because I keep meaning to take them to the um, charity shop. They've never been opened. So anyway, the other day when I'm sitting here, my hands are so dry. And then I saw, uh, and so I know it's quite old, but it's sealed. It's never been opened. So I opened it and actually it's quite nice. So two Christmases later, it's had, it wasn't such a bad gift after all in light of what's going on right now. Anyway, enough waffling. My computer's all running, so I'm going to log on and see what's going on in my work world. Haven't done much at all today, apart from worked four hours this morning. And then um, I came downstairs, had some lunch, and then I went back to bed because I'm exhausted. I think... <sighs> Having been ill for two weeks with this coronavirus, I'm just, I'm tired. And I think I've been doing too much. I've been, you know, a bit over optimistic in uh, my abilities and capabilities. So, um, yeah, went to bed two hours, slept outright. Still tired now, but uh, I got up, 
good news is while I was um, asleep, we had an email saying that William's um, first um, high school school choice had been um, approved. So he's got in the school that he wanted to. I mean, we were like 99% certain he would get in. But yeah, there's always that little sort of niggling doubt at the back of your mind. So that was good. And then for the rest of the day, I've just literally sat on the sofa. I've watched a bit of TV and um, played some games on my phone and just sat here like a vegetable, really. And then I've just got up, um, sorted the laundry out. Cause I, last night, I put laundry in. Uh, my washing machine, I've got a timer. So I set it to go off this afternoon. So uh, I've just put that, hung it out, put some in the dryer. Now I've got a dinner on the go. I'm doing a super easy dinner. I've just thrown a load of sausages in the oven with um, like gravy and stuffing. So it's a bit like a sausage casserole and some potato wedges and peas again because I couldn't be bothered peeling vegetables and it's the only vegetable that Joshua really realistically eats and broccoli but I haven't got broccoli. And Lawrence is just helping um, Josh, he went up to look at the desk. So I don't know if they're going to sand it or varnish it, I don't know what they're going to do. Anyway guys, sorry it's a little bit of a uneventful one today but I just had to take a step back and um, just not do anything really because I didn't feel like it. <laughs> Hope you're all okay, please stay safe, um, things are ramping up around Europe here especially so I just hope wherever you are you're avoiding all this horrible bad sickness and uh, just looking after yourselves. Okay I'll see you in the next vlog, bye guys.